So the market cap is $2.168 trillion. And now the market... Oh! Oh! It went to zero! Yo! GM, welcome back to the channel. In this one, we have the FBI creating shit coins. We have the stock market in China and the US. And of course, the SPX, which is of course the stock market on ETH. So without further ado, let's jump in and see what is going on in these weird and wonderful markets. If you're not subscribed, subscribe to the channel. So BTC kicking things off here looks lackluster. You can see the October lows around here, like 59 and change. So ideally you wanna hold this. We don't wanna be breaking into new October lows here. Hopefully hold this yellow line. It does look weak, but it does often look worse before it looks best. You can see the stock markets though, absolutely chatting up. That is a big green daily yesterday, new all-time high, a new all-time high close for the stock market. So surely at some point, crypto gets a major bid. Overhangs, potentially we have the likes of like $4 billion worth of BTC from the Silk Road days back in the US government's hands. I do think though, if they were to sell that, they pretty much concede the full crypto vote in the US. So it wouldn't make a huge deal of sense to be doing that, but crazy things have happened. We also have the DXY of a dollar pushing on up. So this is putting some pressure on risk assets, but as we've seen, the stock market's pumping, but crypto and Bitcoin obviously not getting the memo there. M2 global money supply on screen, as you can see a bit of a pullback on here, which if I'm looking at things and looking at all the charts that I do look at, it does seem that BTC primarily is mostly correlated to the kind of movements of this, I would say. And this pulling back has coincided again with BTC having a bit of a sell-off here. But on the monthly chart there, you can see Bitcoin still consolidating. We are almost six months post the Bitcoin halving right now. Typically, it takes a good few months post halving for us to get rocking and rolling yet again. Last time round, around the six month mark, that is when Bitcoin started to break out and trend higher. So hopefully things are all aligning around Bitcoin. Yet we do have, of course, the US election, which I think is providing a bit of attention diversion. People not thinking about their crypto portfolios, they're thinking about the US election. So I do feel like that is just one of the speed bumps in the road here that we need to overcome and post election, the market likely gonna trend then upwards. Things we like to see here, Fear and Greed is at 39. So froth removed from markets or at least from certain parts of the market. A 39 fearful read shows a reset to this market with Bitcoin obviously dropping below 61K. I do feel like this is a good thing. You want to be climbing up very slowly, putting in the higher lows with a backdrop of people being uncertain, being fearful. So they have to buy in higher if we do progress from here. Now over to Forex Factory, we have CPI coming in today. We have typically sold off into each of these coming out every month. So <laughs> seems like we are following that trend yet again, PPI tomorrow. So potentially market moving stuff here. As I say, we have sold off previously into these pretty much every single month and then had a bit of a rebound afterwards post these being dealt with. Now the on-chain stock market, SPX 6900 with some of the craziest candles. I mean, bringing belief back to the markets, I would suggest, because it's been a long time since we've seen actual charts like this. Bear in mind, this is on log. If I take it off, <laughs> look how insane that is. All that price action down there is just miles and miles and miles away. And yesterday we had a major test. So you can see from this, there was a big pullback over 40% intraday high to low, 67 down to 39. Eaten back up, now back to 59, which is pretty damn crazy. So there is continued appetite for the memes. And across the board, you're seeing some nice moves and decent chart patterns overall. The Balkan Dwarf Kekek here as another prime example on the precipice of breaking out. Now, this was an interesting one. Agent Chud posted, fastest money made is fastest money lost. Ancient Chinese proverb that was in relation to this chart here. And we did see a big capitulation. However, as I say, it has been eaten back up. So this does show that serious appetite from investors into these meme coins. Next up, we have the FBI launching shit coins. So this is the FBI creating a new token called the Next Fund AI token. And they use this to fish for criminal activity, market makers, manipulation, that kind of stuff. 
Quote, the FBI took the unprecedented step of creating its very own cryptocurrency token and company to identify, disrupt, and bring these alleged fraudsters to justice. The next fund AI token was a cryptocurrency token created on the Ethereum blockchain, and it was a security. This was the white paper or kind of pitch deck that Grant had uh, pulled up. Next Fund AI, welcome to Next Fund AI, where finance meets the future. Our vision is to create a cryptocurrency token that serves as a secure store of value while driving positive change in the realm of artificial intelligence. Red flags, wall of text, lots of words saying nothing at all, terrible body fonts, a honeypot for key securities terminology, and zero images. So pretty crazy stuff when you have the FBI creating shit coins to try and pull in the bad guys, I think there were like 14 arrests or 14 cases brought forward yesterday. So this is pretty crazy stuff. And I'm sure this won't be the first nor last FBI involvements in the blockchain industry, like them creating their own shitters to, to catch people is pretty crazy stuff. And I do feel like a lot of people probably end up in jail post this cycle with this kind of shenanigans actually occurring. So pretty crazy to see. Over to China, we have this. So the Chinese held a press conference, I believe it was on Tuesday morning or Monday morning, and they were expected to announce some form of stimulus, but that didn't happen. We had a bit of a nothing burger or the effect wasn't as large as people were hoping. But we had this news yesterday that China's finance ministry is to hold a briefing on October 12th at 10 a.m., which is a Saturday, which is quite unusual. And it's about briefing on intensifying fiscal policy adjustments. So on Saturday, we might have more news on this, but it does seem that there has been moves overnight here. China's finance minister will be doing the brief, which means they are likely to announce something new, reading into some details here. And they also announced a 500 billion yuan swap facility to support the Chinese stock market. So it seems that they are pressing forward with more stimulus. The market reacted badly to them with their nothing burger earlier in the week. And now the Chinese stock market seems to be ticking up here. This was some of the data from earlier this morning, stocks up broadly in China with a bit of a V-shaped recovery since those previous days. So this would factor in to the overall picture of, yeah, Bitcoin not trading particularly well here right now. But if we're going to see renewed stimulus efforts from the Chinese, we've obviously got most central banks easing at this point, cutting interest rates, you would expect Bitcoin get some serious follow through in the not too distant future here. And as Rao Pal states, hopefully entering the banana zone in the not too distant future after this long consolidation here, which has seen a lot of people get bored, leave the industry, etc. Pretty much seven months of sideways and down. Resolution a lot higher, hopefully. Hope you enjoyed this one. See you in the next one. Peace.